Model 1842 musket is the first to be made with percussion firing rather than flintlock. It is also the first musket produced by the two armories, Springfield and Harper's Ferry, that uses interchangeable parts. It is the last musket produced new that still featured a 69 caliber smooth bore. The Model 1842 was introduced in 1844 and ran until 1855, the date of this musket. These muskets never saw much, if any, service in the U.S.-Mexican War due to lack of ammunition, but the Civil War changed all that. The 1842 saw heavy service in both sides of the Civil War. This particular musket has a little surprise that gives away its Confederate heritage. I will explain that a little later in the video. As can be seen in the picture, the 1842 still utilizes the nose cap style from the early 1800s. Also note, the bayonet lug is on the bottom of the barrel from both armories. The carving on the stock, VKH, could be from a Civil War soldier or some redneck from Georgia after the war. I can say that because I am a redneck from Georgia, but I didn't carve it. There are two cartouches on the opposite side of the lock flat and another carving. I have not yet identified either of the cartouches. If you don't know what a cartouche is, those are stamps with inspector's initials inside that inspected the weapon before issued to troops. There is also a W carved into the flat. I have seen this style W on many Civil War weapons. My guess is it may be William as that was a very popular name in the 1800s. Then again, it could be Wilbur, for all I know. If you look carefully, you will notice there is no VP Eagle Head. This you would typically see here at the breech of the barrel on any Springfield, Harper's Ferry, or Contractor musket. There is a reason for this, and I will explain it in a moment. On the bottom of the barrel is a stamped I. We believe this is for inspected. I find this interesting. Notice the wood on the left side of the barrel band versus the right side of the band. 
It can be seen the wood is thicker. The barrel band slides up to the thicker area that provides a stop for the band. As the band is slid up to the stop, it slides over the band spring. Since this is sprung metal, it pushes the spring in and then as it reaches the end of the spring, it pops back to lock the band in place. The front sight is made into the forward strap of the double strapped front band. This is not the bayonet lug. When the Civil War started, both sides were woefully short of weapons. Most of the muskets on hand at the two armories were still flintlock. Many flintlocks by now had been converted to the new percussion system, but the numbers just weren't there to fight a war. The Confederacy started a system that involved picking up battlefield weapons left behind by the Union Army and their own Confederates after a battle. This was called CNR, standing for Cleaning and Repair. Many thousands of Union and Confederate weapons from dead soldiers were collected in this manner. The weapons would be sent to a CNR facility in the south around the Richmond, Virginia area. Once they were cleaned and repaired, they would be marked with a letter about two inches forward of the trigger guard. The most common letters used were A, F, Q, T, and Z. This model 1842 is marked with a Q. Once the letter was stamped, the weapon would then be placed at the arsenal and sent back out to the Confederate Army as needed. You remember we talked about the barrel not having a VP Eagle Head proof mark. It is believed the barrel on this musket was replaced during the CNR process. There could be a number of reasons it was replaced with a non-proofed barrel. One, the first barrel they had was grabbed and not noticed it wasn't proofed. Two, they had no proof barrels at that moment. Three, it was wartime. Weapons were in short supply and there was tremendous pressure to get guns back out as quickly as possible. It appears there may still be some wadding in what looks like a small piece of plastic at the breech plug. It is estimated from correspondence that over 200,000 arms of all makes picked up off battlefields went through the clean and repaired process in the Confederacy. 
This aspect of the Confederacy was only discovered a few years ago. It is not known how many of these weapons still exist today. It is rare to see one come up for sale. I hope you enjoyed this video of Model 1842 Harper's Ferry Musket with a Q. If you did, please like and subscribe.